Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you doing? Got a revelation this morning. <clears throat> a very strong one. While I was driving over here to my brothers, I was listening to some other people um, contemplating certain scriptures, and it just hit me. And it's where do we draw the line? God is not the God of gray area. He is the God of black and white. You were either for him or against him. You were either in truth or not. You were either saved or unsaved. There is no in between any of these things. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say, God said, oh, it's okay if you go a little over here. He never said that. You're either in truth or you're not in truth. It's that simple and it's that direct. Nowhere in the Bible do the apostles or Jesus ever condone you, you know, dabbling over here in this little gray area. No. It, there is no variation in these things. God is the same all the time, constant. So why are we adding these little gray areas and allowing people to do this and condoning it? This is one of the reasons why I walked away from the grace community. It's one of the reasons why I'm standing out here by myself because, and I know you, there's a bunch of you guys standing with me, because they condone gray area. They condone people who believe false doctrine that is not in the Bible, but say it's a secondary issue or it's okay. They, as long as they got the gospel right, they're good to go. Wrong. That is completely 100% wrong. Why are we not standing up for this? Why are we not being much more vocal about what's wrong? Now, I know a bunch of you guys are. Y'all are going over there and y'all are y'all are telling them. Y'all are commenting on, on what the truth is. Uh, David David Bannister did that yesterday um, on a video somebody did about someone else uh, promoting them. Listen, if somebody believes in a mid or post trib rapture, they are wrong. The Bible clearly, clearly teaches a pre-tribulation rapture event. That's why the Thessalonians and Paul himself were waiting for this event to happen, and they thought it would happen in their lifetime after Jesus left. People that believe that hell isn't eternal, yet Jesus warned more about going to hell than he did about uh, telling people about going to heaven. In fact, the Bible all throughout talks about how eternal and everlasting the punishment is. If somebody believes in annihilationism, that is not a secondary issue just because they got their gospel right. They're wrong. That's not what the Word of God teaches. These are just a few examples. There is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. You must believe in the name of Jesus Christ in order to be saved. There's no gray area. There's no way around it like people like to teach. You are either in truth or you are not in truth. If you are wrong, just like the law, you missed the law in one point, you missed it all. If you are wrong in one point on what the Bible teaches, now it's okay. I, I understand people are going to get a little off here and there, but it's easy to get back on track. But if you are going completely on the opposite side of the aisle, I'm talking something that directly contradicts. So please keep in mind what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about little variances. I'm talking about the complete contradictions of what the Bible teaches. If you are off on one of those, how much has that bled over into your other understandings? How much does that bleed over into your doctrine? Do you know how many prosperity preachers nowadays started out as good doctrinal truth preachers? But they were off on one thing, and it led them into that. A person who goes directly against the word of God cannot be trusted because you don't know what else has been corrupted in their understanding. Go back to the video that I did about when John was in the bathhouse and he saw Serenthus come in. And when he saw it, and Serenthus was a teacher of the word, but he taught it wrong. He, he ta taught against the Trinity, against the resurrection. The Bible clearly teaches Trinity. It clearly teaches resurrection. John jumped up and ran out of the house. God's going to judge this house. Let's get out of here before it falls on us too. Well, what was the big deal? Oh, it's okay if you don't believe in the Trinity, as long as you got the, the, the gospel right. Well, Serenthus probably had the gospel right. 
1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Yeah, see, there's so much more to the gospel than that. People make it make it way too simplistic. Not simple, but simplistic. There's, it's much deeper. The understanding goes far, far deeper than that. But if somebody is wrong on one point, they are wrong on all of it because eventually that one point will carry over into other understandings. You, mu you cannot allow a false doctrine. That, and a false doctrine is something that goes directly against something taught in the Word of God. So the examples I gave, those are considered false doctrines because they directly contradict the Word. God doesn't give you allowances. He's not a God of partiality. He doesn't give you allowances. Well, it's okay if you believe that. No, it is not. You're denying his word. So that's why it's so important for us, if we're going to teach the word, to teach it from a place of truth, exactly as the Bible gives it. Like many of you have told me, I like your channel because you put so much scripture to back up what you say. And the thing is, guys, it's not me. It's all God. He is establishing his word. You got people out there saying, I got a word from the Lord. No, you don't. Uh, I got had a prophetic dream. No, you didn't. I had a prophetic vision. No, you didn't. How can you have a prophecy whenever everything's already been told to us in the Bible? We don't need prophecies now. All we need is the Bible because he told us everything that's going to happen. He t gave us all the information we, we would ever need. Yet, People, that's not good enough. They want to go and they want to get these prophecies. That video I did about Dana Coverstone, when did I tell you everything he said was true in there? I just said what a lot of what he said matched the Bible, matched stuff in the Bible. I don't, I don't particularly think everything he said is true, mainly because it came from a man. I don't put stock in that stuff. I can put, I can attach, thus saith the Lord, to anything I say, and people will believe that it, it came from God. But that doesn't mean it came from God. It's very dangerous to say those things. And it's very dangerous to not only teach something that directly contradicts Scripture, but to condone someone who does this also. This is my problem I have with the grace community. They are not hard-nosed and hard-lined about truth. They accept anybody. All, come on in. It, we're all inclusive. Come on in. Wrong. You don't include demonic teachings. You don't include false doctrine. Salvation is exclusive. It is exclusively for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Why would anything else be any different? And this is my problem today. It's been kind of dry the last few weeks, the last two weeks maybe. Well, about the last week, I guess. And all of a sudden, everything fired back up. I asked the Lord, fire me up, fire all of us up. If we're not going to stand in truth, we need to go sit down and be quiet somewhere. If we're not going to stay focused on what he told us as truth, we do not need to be preaching this word because it will be very bad for us. We're judged with a greater strictness, remember? So if there's any channels that are teaching the word, hear this warning. Because this is for all of us. Me included. If you are teaching something that maybe uh, starting to lead a little bit away from what the Bible, or you change something because you don't like what it says, or this offends you, so you want to adjust it to make it more uh, pleasing for other people so people aren't offended or we don't want to offend anybody, you are wrong and you are teaching a false doctrine. False doctrine, there's no gray area for false doctrine. If it doesn't match the Bible, it's a false doctrine. Simple, period. That's it. you now have a problem that you need to deal with. See, God tests us. He'll let things like that happen. He'll let things uh, come into our lives to test our faith, to see if we want to stay with him or not, or want to go to these other things. A lot of people miss the mark. A lot of people go and believe other stuff. I had somebody comment here yesterday on one of my videos, and it was a channel, and of course it was a fake channel, uh, Pastor Tim, the greatest teacher. He said, hey, there's still time for you to reconcile and come back over here where uh, everything's good and all that. And I said, no, I don't think so. I'm not, I don't want to be reconciled. Why would I want to reconcile with man? I'm going to reconcile with God. I'll fellowship with my Lord. I don't want to be around those people. Because they condone false doctrine. They said, and I'm talking about moderators and 
Tim and a bunch of bunch of people. Uh, uh, Barry, Gar- uh, Greg, Lisa, Wackadoo Samoan, all of them guys. They condoned Renee Rowland preaching a false doctrine. It's a secondary issue. No, it is not a secondary issue. If it goes against the word of God, it's a primary issue. What truth are you standing for? David Benjamin condoned it. He was the first one trying to talk me out of out of saying anything. I don't think so. You either stand for the word of God or you don't. And if you don't, you better shut your channel down and stop talking because you're bringing condemnation down on your head because of this. The word of God is clear. The word of God is very clear. So if this is where you want to be and where you feel comfortable, where it makes you feel good, good luck. You've been warned. I can no more hold back the truth from someone than I can hold back food and water from someone who needs it. We all need truth. It is of immense importance. It's life or death, eternal life or death, that we know what the truth is and that if we're going to teach, we teach that truth. Because if we don't, there is a payment for that. It's all over the Bible. I've taught on it over and over and over again, and I'm going to keep teaching on it. Guys, this is the warning. Do not uh, condone things. God does not condone. He does not condone variance in his teaching. He does not condone false doctrine. He does not, he does not condone secondary issues. So if he doesn't do it, why are you doing it? Let's go into prayer with our God because this revelation has been amazing and it has fired me up and set me on fire. And I want to give him glory for that because it is because what he is doing with the people who want to have the truth. And it's very few, it seems like. But like a bunch of y'all watch my videos and y'all y'all confess that. That's what you want. You want the truth, even if it hurts you, even if it convicts you. You want the truth. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To thank you for opening up these revelations and these understandings, giving us your true word without variance, without um, sidebar points, without gray area. Your truth is cut and dried. It is one way and one way only, and that's your way. Why does man change it to suit his needs? Is it fear? Is it self-glorification? Is it pride? All the above. Father, thank you for giving us the desires of our heart, and that is your truth. Even if it hurts us, even if it convicts us, it is your truth. You get the glory, and you get the praise. There are people that are going out of their way, you see it, that are teaching and condoning false doctrine. You gave the revelation that the rapture is a pre-tribulation event, that hell is eternal punishment forever, and a whole host of other things. That's just two examples. Things that are, it is like this, and it is this only. Salvation. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ, and you will have everlasting life. You did never added baptism to it. You never added works of the law to it. You never added any work to it. And you gave us an example, the thief on the cross. God, you set that up to happen like that, to prove to us in our time how, how simplistic salvation is. Yet man cannot stand it. He's got to add something to it. Why are they teaching a false doctrine? And it's not, well, it's often a little point. It's a false doctrine if it goes against your word. Completely false. You know, the more you show me, the more I understand the frustration of the prophets of old. Why they were so aggravated and so fired up and so uh, depressed about what Israel was doing. And they would not listen. They would not give you the time of day. They would not stay in your truth. They always had to change it to suit their needs. Instead of just trusting you. I don't want to change your word. I want your word the way you delivered it. I don't want you know, secondary truths or, or condoning this or condoning that. Because I know if I condone something that's wrong, I align myself with it. I don't want to do that. 
And I pray this is a warning to everyone out there who's doing that, that if they're condoning something that's not correct, that they will be chastised and convicted of it so they can correct it and make the proper changes to lead people back to the truth. Because if we condone it, even one thing wrong that you have printed, we've, we've condoned all of it being wrong. And that's not your way. I know that you didn't put anything in there for us to be confused over. It's one way and it's one way only. So why are we doing it? Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace and your patience to give us time to realize these things, to give us these warnings so that we will walk in truth. We will answer and respond to the word. Respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Respond to your love for us to stay locked into your truth. Help us all to do that. Help us all to honor you by doing that. Psalm 12 says, Man's treachery and God's constancy. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. For the faithful disappear from among the sons of men. That couldn't be more true. They speak idly, everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and a double heart they speak. That couldn't be more true. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? This is the grace community on YouTube, if I ever saw it. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which he yearns. The words of the Lord are pure words. This verse 6 says everything we need to know about your word. The words of the Lord are pure words like silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. You shall keep them, O Lord. You shall preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. His word is purified seven times. That means it's perfect. Why are we making it imperfect? Why are we adding dross to the silver? The wicked prowl on every side when vileness is exalted among the sons of men. That vileness is that false doctrine. It's condoning false doctrine. And lifting up another person who teaches such things. That puts you in league with them. That puts you in under their punishment that they have coming for them. There's a whole lot of people on here that think they're good to go. That are believers. That are condoning false doctrine. And you have put yourself in a very, very precarious position by doing so. You either need to call out truth or you need to stop preaching. You either need to stand up for God and stand up for Christ and what they said and what this word teaches, or you need to stop teaching. Lord, I pray this conviction on every one of us. I pray that this truth, your truth, is embedded into our hearts so strongly that we cannot fight it and we cannot deny it. I pray that the people who are doing these things in your name that are wrong and contrary to your word will be shut down and they will stop misleading people because so many people are following them and so many people are believing in them and the hatred coming out of this stuff is legendary. The vitriol that is going against people who are preaching the truth is, I have never seen it this high. I don't think anyone has. We know there's a day coming when this is all going to change. And they're going to get their recompense. They're going to see the result and the reward of their actions. I don't want them to have to see that. But they choose it. Lord, this is the warning you gave me and a few others. And I'm sounding all, all, all the alarm about this warning. If they won't heed my words, Father, I can't do anything for them. I know all you want me to do is deliver the message. I'm going to deliver the message. In Proverbs 12, 22, it says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. Father, make me to act faithfully. Make those who seek your truth to act faithfully, to walk in faith and in truth concerning you. But those lying lips, those who condone false doctrines, those who condone false teachings that go directly against your word are an abomination to you because they lie 
turn them back. The ones that are truly believe, turn them back. Get them out of these things before it's too late. And the ones that aren't saved that are doing this, bring their your wrath upon them and shut them down because they're leading the very elect away. And it's so evident to see the hatred and the anger and the resentment that they shed towards the messenger. Here a while back, I told you, send me. If no one else will do it, send me. And you did. And I'm doing it. And I'm not going anywhere. The truth has to be presented because they've gone out of their way to deny your word. Father, don't let this go on. How can they do this? How can they do this and call themselves Christians? How can they do this and say they are right? Bless you, Father. And thank you for the amazing amazing truth and revelation you have given us that is one way and one way only not two not four not three one your way and help us who want your truth who desire your truth to stay in your truth and to not vary and to not follow false doctrine and to not get caught up in things we shouldn't be caught up in bless you father in jesus name Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. If you are a teacher of the word on YouTube or social media or anywhere, if you are a pastor of a church and you happen to be listening to this video, it is vitally important that you examine yourself and examine what you are teaching. If what you are teaching contradicts his word in any way, you need to fix it now. If you do not fix it now, when the door shuts... It's going to be too late and you will have no excuse. The alarm is being sounded. There are many like me who are sounding the alarm on these things. Grace community, hear my words. You are condoning false doctrine because you want to be friends with everybody. Stop it. You know what the truth is. You're reading the same word I am. You know what God expects. You're reading the same word I am. And if you're not willing to stand for that word, if you're not willing to stand for the Lord, why are you teaching? Because all you do is dishonor him by what you do and by how you do it. Turn away from these things, deny these things, and go back to the first love. Go back to the Lord and teach his truth. If you make enemies, you make enemies, so be it. If you cause people to stumble and struggle because they were caught up in a lie, so be it. We don't teach people lies to make them feel good so they don't stumble. If they stumble, it's because they were already going to stumble. The benefit is bringing them into repentance so they turn to the Lord. Let's be real. Not everybody's going to get saved. Jesus said that himself. The way is narrow and few there are that find it. I see more and more why it's so few. Brothers and sisters, heed these words. Look in his word. Pay attention to what he's telling you. Because this word is truth. Not what man says. Not what man teaches. What God teaches. I love you all. I pray this word finds you well. And this word fires you up. And gives you conviction. So that you will stay in truth. I'll see you all in the next video.